is windy, it is snowy, but most importantly, it is cold out today, and I don't want to be cold. So, we're going to take care of that in the van. I'm going to be installing a little bit of insulation today. Alright, so check it out. You can see I've installed already one uh, 4x8 sheet of 1 inch thick uh, foam board. Basically the idea is it just uh, sits down in between those 1x3s. Now, it is a little proud um, of the 1x3s, but I think whenever I put the underlayment down, the plywood, that will actually help hold that foam in place. Um, I'm also not too worried about the uh, the ridges in the floor. There is going to be a little bit of a gap between the bottom of the board and the floor, but uh, I don't think it'll really be of any consequence. So let's go ahead. We'll cut this uh, pink board up and get it fit in. All right. So got all of the insulation cut and in. We are pretty tight here, almost all the way around the van. Um, there were just a few tiny spots right there by the door latch. Uh, and kind of this tiny little strip over here in front of the wheel well. Not really concerned about that, but got all of the insulation down on the floor. So up next is, uh, well, plywood. Got the first piece of plywood down here. Obviously, first piece, pretty easy. I uh, really only had to trim it on this corner just a little bit. And uh, just a little bit of trimming up and around here to uh, keep it out from around the uh, body. And other than that, it pretty much fit in well. And I also got kind of lucky it just about lined up on this uh, board. Didn't quite split it, but there'll definitely be enough to uh, screw down the other piece without having to trim the edge of this board. So. Okay, so I just got the first piece of plywood screwed down there. So a little bit about it. Um, I went with uh, five mil underlayment. Um, in real numbers, that's like seven thirty seconds. Um, couple considerations. Uh, first, the spans are not too large. Um, worked out to about fifteen inch centers on one by threes, um, and also this foam that is under the unsupported span um, is rigid foam and. It actually does offer a pretty good support. Additionally, like I was saying, um, the foam is one inch thick, so it does sit a little bit proud of the boards. Um, I think the five mil is just enough to hold that foam down and keep the floor from being wavy. Um, but another big consideration that went into the floor is that I am a fairly large human, uh, about on the order of six foot one on a good day. Um, and so preserving the vertical space in here is definitely a concern, at least for me. Um, I know a lot of people that are shorter that wouldn't have any problem with going with half inch or three quarter inch plywood uh, just for the rigidity of it, but I don't really think it's necessary in this application, like I said, and additionally I am trying to preserve that vertical space. Okay, we're back. Got. Uh, just about all of the plywood down. Um, there's just a little bit in the back here that I have left to do. Um, just a little strip and then that little corner. But I ran out of screws. So not gonna be finishing that tonight, but everything that is for the wheel wells is done. And uh, you'll notice before I put the plywood down, just along the edges, I did a little bit of spray foam it's feeling pretty solid right now, um, but let's talk a little bit about the flooring that I got for it. Okay, so let's talk about the flooring. Um, I went with 
um, vinyl click lock flooring. Um, basically just because it's pretty tough. Um, if you install it correctly, it is waterproof. And uh, those are two things that I definitely need in the van. Um, you know, I'm gonna be coming in and out of here um, in wet kayaking gear, um, dirty, muddy. I wanna be able to sweep the van out, mop it out if I need to. Um, and so this quick lock flooring is probably one of the better options for that. So let's go ahead and install it. Click together flooring is an easy way to get a woodlock floor without forking out the big bucks. The name says it all. The pre-finished planks just click together, no messy glue or nailing. I'll take you through the job from the start. Preparing the surface, leveling it if needed, and then the installation. In one weekend, you can have a brand new, durable floor. Check it out. The floor is mostly in. Um, all of the floor uh, that will be exposed um, that's not underneath of the bed where the storage area will be is in. Uh, pretty sweet. Feels really solid. Um, there are a few spots where I still have to uh, click the planks together here, but uh, it's, you know, 10.30 at night, I didn't feel like pounding out here, waking everyone up. Anyway, got pretty close on all the gaps there. A um, couple notes though, are you do want to leave um, a good quarter inch gap or so for expansion. Um, Especially considering that I'm installing this when it's probably about freezing out. Um, this vinyl will probably expand. Hey guys, what's up? So I've been up since probably about 7 working on the van. But this is the first video that I've shot all day. Uh, as you can see, I've done a little bit of work. Um, so first off, we got the floor all in. Uh, everything fastened down, all of the clicks locked. Um, we also got <clears throat> the insulation cut and uh, fully mounted along the bottom. Insulation up top, it's uh, slowly curing. <clears throat> and uh, you'll also see that I was able to get some of the uh, 
vertical uh, members attached there. Those pieces of wood will be what the, uh, the walls and then eventually the cabinets on top of that will mount to. So yeah, right now the van is looking a little hectic, but uh, hopefully tomorrow morning this will all be cured and it can come down. Uh, before I forget about it is the wiring. So right here I've got three wires. Um, one is running up to the ceiling and then down the center of the ceiling. It's going to be for the lights. Um, it cuts up and across um, this panel and then up through the corner into this top section and comes down the center. There is a wire that is run for what will eventually be a 110 outlet at the desk. It simply follows this uh, center track and it comes out right there, hopefully right where the desk goes. And the third wire that's run follows the same track from here forward and it comes out just behind the driver's seat and eventually that will be a 12 volt circuit that will run the fridge and probably have another 12 volt outlet. One additional wire that I ran um, right here just goes into this channel, pops out right here. Um, basically this will be a circuit with two 110 outlets on it. Um, one will be kind of near the bed and then one kind of farther down here, um, kind of near the kitchen area. Um, that circuit will actually just come out of this wall, run along what will be the front of the bed, but inside, um, kind of inside the storage area there. And over to this side, um, essentially I'm thinking that most of the um, electrical components will end up either being mounted on this driver's wall around the wheel well or against the back side of the front of the bed. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but if we ever get to that point, I'll explain it a little better. Okay guys, so check it out. Got uh, most of all the insulation up and in. Um, still got a little bit of the stuff up top to fit into place, but about attaching the insulation. So I used a Loctite foam board adhesive. Um, I'd read some good stuff about it. Thought I'd try it out. 
I don't know if it's the ideal uh, way to apply these foam boards. Um, I've seen a lot of people using uh, Super 77 spray adhesive, and I'm sure that works good if you're applying a very flat panel to another very flat panel. Um, I was thinking that this Loctite adhesive would do a bit better because it's uh, more of like a caulk. Um, but I'm not really sure if it's actually the Loctite adhesive that's holding these panels up or if it's the spray foam around it um, that really locked these panels in. Um, but for the most part, you just saw there I uh, was trimming all the foam down. Um, like I said, there's just a little bit more insulation work to be done and then uh, we can start putting the paneling up on the walls. Just like that, the first panel is in on the door. Now the door is probably the easiest because, well, it was just about four foot wide. Um, so I really only had to cut the panel to length. And also there was nowhere to really bolt uh, any joists to. So I pretty much had to resort to self tappers. Uh, to hold this one in. Now I will need to do a little bit of trim along the edge of the door there, but uh, for right now it's looking pretty solid. And let's go ahead and get started on the rest of the walls. Back here, uh, since you guys were last here, got this entire wall done on the driver's side. Uh, all the wires run through, all screwed down. Um, and then also, we got these furring strips up along the top here. This will be what the uh, roof mounts to, or well, I guess the ceiling. Um, right now, that's about all I can do till I go and pick up some more spray foam to uh, seal all of these panels in and this gap up here. And then I'll be able to start on the wall on the other side.